What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Shout out to everyone that's been liking, subscribing, commenting, and to everyone that's been sticking it out during this really prolonged, boring, sideways market. So shout out to everyone that's still sticking around. Some of the coins that we've seen up today, we are seeing Huobi token, Buy Box token, Binance coin, which is interesting because these are all exchange tokens. So you kind of think in a market where, let's say, it's not really going up at the moment, but you do have these coins and tokens that have real hardcore utility, which is exchange tokens. I mean, bear market, bull market, people are trading, right? So these are, these actually have a lot of utility. Plus, don't forget, you do get to, some of them offer discounts on trading fees, uh, uh, mo a lot of them have referrals and then others you can actually get percentages of the trades by holding the tokens f as rewards as well. So in times like these, these exchange tokens do seem to be proving, you know, of worth. Also, Walton Chain doing well, up 6%. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. Cyber Miles, R Chain, GX Chain, Bank to the Future, Nebulous, NXT, all other coins doing as well. And, you know, obviously we have Bitcoin just sticking around. It's kind of 23, 24, 25 mark. So, yeah, nothing really too exciting today. But we do have 99 Bitcoins, Bitcoin obituaries. Bitcoin has officially died for the 300th time, guys. So according to this article in Forbes, Bitcoin desperately needs abundant cheap electricity supplies. Without access to abundant electricity, Bitcoin mining can't continue, and without mining, Bitcoin is dead. And ultimately, electricity supply is controlled by governments. So there you guys go. Bitcoin has officially died 300 times. <laughs> okay, so we do have on some brighter news, Steve Wozniak, Apple's co-founder, saying, I want Bitcoin to be the world's single currency. He's very bullish on it. In fact, he said that I buy into what Jack Dorsey says. Not that I necessarily believe it's going to happen, but because I want it to be that way. That is so pure thinking. So Jack Dorsey, for those of you who don't know, is the CEO of Twitter and Square. And he said recently that he believes that Bitcoin will be the world's only currency, perhaps within a decade. Interesting. Within a decade, guys. So, before we go any farther, I have to talk about this. So we have the former Augur CEO, Matt Liston. He has created a religion on the blockchain, okay? So I guess the project faced some internal struggles and Liston was forced to leave the company after a major lawsuit. So although this experience was anything but pleasant for all parties involved, Liston seems to have had since focused his attention on an entirely different venture, launching a blockchain-based religion known as, are you guys ready for this? Zero X Omega. <laughs> yes, guys, look right here. Zero X Omega. So I don't know what that means. I don't know anything about this. I'm not sure what this religion is going to be based on. Apparently, it's going to be on a blockchain. What are they going to think of next? So there you go, guys. Now you have religion officially on the blockchain. Now, Let's talk about Ripple. You know, we all like to hate on Ripple. We all seem to, you know, they're the big old bank coins and this and that. But it was really nice to see that Ripple Labs announced that it's partnering with 17 universities to launch a research initiative program designed to advance the industry titled the University Blockchain Research Initiative. They're going to be donating 50 million US dollars to support blockchain research and innovation. So maybe Ripple's not all that bad, guys. I mean, there's $50 million for blockchain research. I'll take it. I'll take it, Ripple. So guys, also, you have EOS. Uh, so the token conversion, they're saying, has left $1.1 million worth of funds locked on Ether Delta. So I don't know if you guys have ever used Ether Delta. It's not exactly one of the most friendliest exchanges ever. Um, some people, it, it, it is a decentralized exchange. It's kind of like IDEX, but the, the user interface is just really, uh, kind of a sight for sore eyes. And you do have these horror stories of, they, they say people with fat fingers, you know, accidentally buying something totally wrong, paying way too much for something. So you've just heard these dreaded horror stories of Ether Delta. Well, they're saying that apparently there's roughly $1.1 million worth of Ethereum, 
uh, or excuse me, EOS, roughly 74,483 EOS tokens still contained on the Ether Delta main wallet. So considering that the tokens have already been converted off of the ERC standard into the actual EOS mainnet coins, the question is, what are we going to do with these tokens? Are they gone forever? I mean, it's possible. So that was a very interesting story that I read as well. Speaking of, we know we just had that mainnet. A lot of people are asking about mainnets. So I found this graphic right here, which I'll leave a link to. It has all the upcoming uh, mainnets. It also talks about some of them with their test nets as well, ranging from VeChain all the way to Daddy. Um, yeah, the key, IOTech, so many, so many in here. Ontology, Zilliqa. I'll leave that for you guys to look at as well. Now, coming out of one of my favorite projects, we do have the South Korea Custom Service hosted an MOU ceremony with eight organizations, including Nomad Connection, Matrix 2B, CJ Korea Express, and Lot Global Logistics. The blockchain-based customs clearance platform will be utilizing LoopChain, the underlying blockchain technology used for Icon, and several other companies and consortiums in South Korea. LoopChain has been used in a variety of projects such as Chain ID, a blockchain-based identity authentication service being utilized in Samsung Pass and by a consortium of financial institutions. So basically, this is what this is the deal. So Korea Custom Service, or KCS, has applied blockchain technology in hopes to grow the direct purchasing of foreign goods. It takes too much time and money to report a small volume of e-commerce sales. As a result, KCS has taken the first step in establishing blockchain-based e-commerce clearing services with the goal of providing prompt and accurate data validation. When the blockchain-based e-commerce platform is established, it will not only lower logistics costs, but also mitigate the threat of illegal activities such as smuggling and false reporting. So that's also some more good news for Icon. Now, we do have a sneak peek at Apex's wallet. Now, we know that June is going to be a very big month, okay? Voter and super node details, listing on BitZ and another seven exchanges, and development is ahead of schedule for the CPX wallet. Uh, it should be coming out within the next four to six weeks. So look, here you go right here. This is basically what the wallet looks like. It's a wallet in disguise, complete control over your data. So if you guys want, I will definitely let you have a look at this. You know, it says discover brand loyalty rewards. And yeah, so that's basically good news. It looks like Apex is well ahead of schedule and they have a lot coming out this month. So that's something to be very excited for if you are a CPX holder. Now, we have some other great news coming out of Walton Chain. So they recently just had this tweet that they posted. So basically, Walton Chain has been invited to the Great Hall of the People for China Blockchain Technology Innovation and Development Forum. So what exactly does this mean? Well, you can see here's some pictures right here that they took. So, okay, I gotta say this name. Jiang Zengua, Vice Chairman of the Standing Committee of the 10th National People, <clears throat> People's Congress said during his speech, the current new round of scientific and technological revolution and industrial changes has swept across the world. Digital industrialization and industrial digitalization have become new trends and the new power in people's economic development. The blockchain technology is currently considered as the most promising and imaginative technological innovation in the world. It has features such as decentralization, non repudiation, temper resistance, security, and irreversibility. Therefore, it can be widely used in finance, people's welfare, medical care, government affairs, and other related fields. And we find Walton directly at the center of all of this. So here's more pictures from the event as well. So the trust system brought by blockchain will bring value to the society, which is the cornerstone of the smart contract in the future. Blockchain itself is the basic technology which needs to merge with artificial intelligence, big data, cloud computing, and other technologies to achieve technological revolution and industrial upgrade. So that's just really, really, really great news for Walton Chain, guys. Moving forward, moving on. Now, if you guys want, I do have this video right here. So basically, this is from IOHK. And it's talking about the Shelley project and its goals, okay? Now, this is related to Cardano. So if you guys are interested, I will leave a link in the description. As you can see right here, it's pretty much just a visual 
Well, you, there's actually a, a woman talking right now. So the research paper explains the, the what the end is to follow the protocol. And All right. So if you guys want, if you're interested, I'll definitely drop a link in that. If you know you, you're uh, interested in Cardano, we also have the key. So they were at the Huobi Central Crypto Summit Forum. And basically what I really wanted to say about this was, you know, they really basically wowed the crowd, essentially. Um, they, 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 they had one of the best presentations. And the thing that they really wanted to stress was that the key project has already connected the personal identity of 210 million people in 66 different cities. All right. It's backed by the government's database. Here's three advantages. It has more reliable results. The supporting data is gathered in real time. It's comprehensive, accurate, and reliable. The data is also validated in advance by government agencies or other public institutions. Two, it's much lower cost. Full use of existing data sources, for example, avoidance of duplicate work for data collection, processing, and authentication. And finally, better user experience. It is not necessary for an individual user to install any application or upload any information. So basically, they had a very good presentation. And yes, that was basically all I wanted to say about that. Also, let's talk about another partnership. So you have Elastos and IOX partnership. Now, this is from Fei Li. She is the chief marketing officer at the Elastos Foundation. And she says almost all partners reached out to us because we have done research on and we believe Elastos is the one that can run our product. Elastos really is the decentralized peer-to-peer -peer open source network that can run all smart devices. I agree. I agree. Now... History was made last week at the Campstool Ranch near Devil's Tower, Wyoming, when blockchain-based technology was employed at a cattle branding, the first time the technology had been used for such an endeavor. The goal of the pilot made by Wyoming Certified Beef LLC and German-based traceability solution provider TE Food International is to showcase the premium living conditions of the cattle, grass-fed, on open range, etc., etc., more use for blockchain. Okay, there we go. This is something that we knew was coming. We knew they were going to utilize it for this. So one of the advantages, though, of this is that you have had these bills that were recently passed in Wyoming, which has made it a lot more friendly to kind of like test out these different blockchain solutions. So that's really good news as well. There you go. Supply chain logistics. I also wanted to talk about the X router. Now the X router comes from the BlockNet, and I had a recent interview with them as well. So I'm going to drop a link in uh, to, to this article in the description. It is a little, little bit lengthy to read. So basically, in a nutshell, the X router you can you it's possible to verify blockchain records on theoretically any blockchain without downloading even a single chain. So we know that, for example, Bitcoin's is well over 100 gigabytes in size. Um, you know, even people that have to download, you know, and if you don't have a light wallet and you try to download one of those, like, for example, the original A-Chain wallet, people were like, this is literally taking me days, right? So now with this technology, that's good. That, you, don't, you don't have to worry about that. That's not even an issue anymore. Here's another really cool thing, too. So build upon the API. So as an example, adapt for decentralized file storage would likely involve at least three services. So you'd have payment in multiple coins, the authentication of its users without resorting to any central solution for managing personal information, and the storage of encrypted fragments of files across peer-to-peer -peer network. If this DAP were to be built the way mobile apps or websites are built today, development would easily, or would essentially be a simple matter of coding the business logic to orchestrate pre-existing APIs for the above three services, making development fast and cheap. Yet, at present, dApps are coded from scratch, adding vastly to code and time of development and significantly increasing the risk of security issues. XRouter changes the game, okay? And the other thing I wanted to say is that the X router is intended to open up a marketplace for registry services. So X router will make uh, provision for the invoking of any number of registry services, which may compete on a cost basis and on the degree of truthfulness of the data they offer. So I just thought that was really awesome. The BlockNet, X router, really cool. Now, really quick topic, Alchemy. We do know stable coins are going to be probably a really big thing moving forward. One thing that people may not realize is that the platform is also planning to launch 
the SDUSA currency in late 2018, and that's going to be the official stable coin on NEO or stable token, whatever you want to call it. Now, what's interesting is you're seeing you're seeing a lot of these other people come out with stable coins as well. So there's this new coin called Carbo. Now I guess the whole thing behind Carbo is that it's essentially a privacy stable coin, which is weird, interesting. So according to the white paper, there are many features to keep in mind. Not only is it far less volatile, obviously, it also uses an adaptive emission model. Additionally, there is an adaptive block size limit and difficulty. However, the one thing that I found interesting about this was the use of master nodes. Why do you need master nodes for a stable coin? I don't really understand that 100%. And also, it has a hybrid POW POS model. I don't know. It's just weird. It's like, how many different ways can we combine the technology? And oh, it's a new one. So, one other thing that we had, so you might have heard about this. So, you have Microsoft buying GitHub. And the crypto community is not happy about that. Now, we know what happened when Microsoft bought Skype. A lot of people said that they were not happy with what Microsoft did with Skype. The user experience just wasn't as good, et cetera, et cetera. So the situation that we have over here is that they say that they are going to be buying it for $7.5 billion. However, a lot of people that use GitHub, which is basically the majority of you know crypto community or the, you know, the devs for coding with crypto and all that, they said that they're considering moving to GitLab instead. So here's the interesting thing. So upon the announcement of the acquisition, the hashtag, uh, hashtag moving to GitLab started and developers began doing just that. So GitLab didn't hesitate when it came to this and they made sure that they were going to basically take advantage of this movement and so now they're offering a 25% discount on gold and ultimate memberships. So what is the reason behind the mass exodus to GitLab? Well, they say Bitcoin was adopted early on by cypherpunks and is generally a community that is looking for more decentralization, not being acquired by Microsoft. So when a corporate giant takes over the platform, well, they're going to definitely put their arms up in the air. So following the announcement of the merger, there was a significant spike in activity on GitLab, according to GitLab's statistic portal. In fact, there was so much activity that they had difficulty keeping up with it, and some people even started moving over to Keybase, okay? So yeah, that's basically what's going on, guys. And they say that potentially, if this move continues, you might end up seeing a very, very slow death of GitHub. So... Yeah. Sorry, Microsoft. <laughs> anyway, so you have Binance official uh, saying that the ICO bubble, if it bursts, it's a good thing. Now, this is head of Binance, uh, Ella Zhang. And basically what the article really explains is that these ICOs, they're very speculative, okay? And unfortunately, they take away a lot of the market valuation of really good projects. And I will admit this myself. It's a little depressing when you're holding a really great project, a coin that you believe in, a coin that's nailing partnerships, everything is coming out on time, their projects are amazing, and you're just seeing the price go down and down and down and down because everybody's trying to make that 100x. You know, everybody wants the next icon or the next ant shares neo you know quark chain you know everyone's going crazy over quark chain lately so you're seeing a lot of this money go into the icos and it's getting taken away from really good projects so she says not to say that these projects that are that are startups aren't good projects it's just that she's saying that unfortunately a lot of the good projects they're not really they're not going anywhere price wise because everybody's just trying to get those you know, 100x gains. And I do agree. And I think at some point, we kind of need to just stop, focus on what we have, focus on the projects that are out there. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of do agree on that as well. Now, this article came out and it said that Japan is going to be officially banning anonymous cryptocurrencies on the 18th of June. And this comes from the Financial Service Agency of Japan. Now we do know that there was the coin check hack of 50 or 533 million dollars of NEM back in the day and recently we actually have seen a lot of uh, these exchanges starting to delist these privacy currencies. So, you know, it sucks for privacy coins, but it does seem like they don't like them because of the ease of 
you know, money laundering. It's really simple to send some Bitcoin to an exchange, wash it through some Monero somewhere else, you know, and do a shape shift or something like that. And then boom, you know, the Bitcoin shows up in another wallet and nobody really knows where it came from. So yeah, that's basically their stance on that. It's unfortunate, but I, you know, it's like you can kind of understand from a business legal standpoint why they want to do this, but it really is unfortunate and kind of goes against the principles of crypto. So that does suck. But some good news for Japan, I guess, is that uh, Coinbase is officially launching in Japan. So I guess that's good news. I think that's good news. I don't know. I mean, Coinbase is getting really big now. I'm afraid that they'll become like the the choke point. You know what I'm saying? Like we do need these other like ethos. You know, we gotta get we gotta get more fiat fiat gateways. I think that's gonna really help. Um, you don't want to give too much power to one particular entity. Um, as far as blockchain adoption goes, you do have PlayStation Five. So they're saying that they're going to be coming out with a patent that allows D uh, DRM or digital rights management technology. But the cool thing is that this is going to be on the blockchain. So it's a blockchain, blockchain solution that would ensure that purchases are tied to that particular buyer forever. So imagine it being like an ERC 721, right? Kind of like that. Maybe, I don't know, but that's what I think of. PlayStation users could potentially even transfer the rights to other people. Great. And finally, we have Mr. John McAfee saying that he is running for president. Again. <laughs> that's right. So in this tweet, he said, In spite of past refusals, I have decided to run for president of the United States in 2020. If asked again by the Libertarian Party, I will run with them. If not, I will create my own party. I believe this will be... <laughs> I will this will be best to serve the crypto community by providing the ultimate campaign platform for us. Now, I have to say, I can't imagine this dude as president, but if he ever was, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can't even imagine. I mean, I mean, we have Donald Trump right now, so I kind maybe I kind of can imagine it in a weird way. But um yeah. So I don't know, guys. <laughs> John McAfee as president. I actually saw somebody on a comment. They were like, if John McAfee actually becomes president in 2020, I'll eat my own junk on national TV. So that's basically that, guys. But that being said, I want to say thank you so much for coming back to my channel. It's Tuesday. The markets are not ex that exciting as usual. But, you know, there's still things happening. There's still news happening. Uh, you know, focus in on those projects that you guys are really interested in. You know, follow up on them. Now's a great time to do that research. Really re reconsider your position in the market you know what coins do you want to hold because we all know that we were looking at the ta charts and we noticed that bitcoin may potentially have that breakout after this one final dip so i guess it's kind of like place your bets you know pick your cards whatever you want to do and get ready so that being said, guys, thank you so much. You're awesome. I love everyone. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that. Hit the bell notification. I come out with these every single day, guys. Say hello to me. Join the Telegram. Link in the description. You're awesome. I will not take any more of your time. Have a beautiful day. And until next time, my name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Stay crypto and peace out.